Hey guys, so today I want to show you how to set up virtual drums in Cubase 9. Hello, Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, if you want to do me a favor, please share and like this video. And if this is your first time here, click on the subscribe button below. If you want to know more on music production, recording, mastering, mixing within your home studio. All right, let's get into it. Let me show you how I set up my virtual drums in Cubase 9. Now, this can be done in other DAW. So if you're not using Cubase, no worries. Just, you know, keep on watching and you'll learn some stuff for sure. Now, the reason why I set up my virtual drums the way I'm going to show you is very simple. I record and mix acoustic drums a lot. And I want to keep the same kind of approach when I'm working with a virtual instrument. So to start with, I load a virtual drum instrument. In this case, I'm going to be using Steven Slate drums. Now, everything I'm going to show you here can be done with other virtual instruments, like Easy Drummer, for example. But today, I'm going to use Steven Slate drums. Okay, now, um, I have a patch loaded, and I have uh, everything, you know, uh, sent to the same stereo output, like it does by default. So, if I listen to my drum performance here, Okay, everything comes out into the same stereo output. Now, what I want to do here is I want to send the kick drum to its own output and the snare to its own output and the overheads and rooms to their own outputs. So this way I'll be able to mix them individually like I would with an acoustic drum. So first what I need to do, I need to activate the outputs within Cubase. So if I go here on the right side of my project here, I have the VST instrument tab that I need to check and this is where I loaded my uh, Steven Slate drum sampler. Um, what I do here, I'm just going to click on activate outputs. Now, if you don't see that window, just make sure that window is activated, okay? Just by going on the top right of the project window, okay? And you'll see all the virtual instruments that you loaded. They're all going to be in this VST instrument window. Okay, so I'm going to go and select the output, activate outputs section, and I'm going to just click on all outputs. So now all of the available outputs within the instrument itself are going to be available directly on the mixer. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, and I'm going to assign each of the instrument within the drums to its own output. Now, uh, if we look here, we have three kick drum sample playing at the same time. Now I'm happy with that balance. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to route them to the same output. I'm going to use a mono output for the kick, which is out number nine, that is mono. I don't need to use a stereo output. Now the stereo and mono outputs are going to be different from an instrument to another, okay? Now uh, in this case with the Steven Slate drums, this is what I get here, okay? So I have several outputs that are mono and some other outputs that are stereo. So I'm going to send all of these three kick drum samples to the same output and my snare is going to go to the next available mono output. Same for my bottom snare. And the toms, you know, I don't have toms on this session anyway, so I'm going to leave them alone. I can actually just group them together and send them to the same stereo uh, output if I want. Now I'm going to go to the hi-hat and I'm going to send it to the next available mono output, which is uh, output 12. And uh, I don't have a ride, China Splash. So I'm going to look at the overheads and send these to a stereo output. Usually overheads are mic'd with two microphones, okay? So I'm going to send that overhead to its own stereo out and same for the room on its own stereo out as well. All right, so I am all set up. I can actually rename, okay, within Cubase, these outputs. Okay, uh, this track is a stereo one. So this, this is my overhead stereo output. And right beside is the room, stereo output. All right, right here I have the kick. I'm going to rename that to kick. Rename the other one to snare, bottom snare. And this one is the hi-hat. <laughs> 
and I have the hi-hat. Now, pretty cool stuff, they all have their own channel. Now, basically, I am ready to mix if I want to. If I'm happy with the performance, I can simply add some plugins. Okay, get rid of all the, the outputs I don't need, first of all. Um, if you want to do so, let's go back here uh, in the output section and just, you know, unselect whatever you don't need. Okay, so let's do so. And now what I want to do is to bounce everything into audio, okay? I don't like to keep a virtual instrument active during the mixing stage. That's my thing. So I love to mix my drums with audio tracks. I commit when I'm happy with the performance, the MIDI mock-up, I just commit to it. I bounce everything in audio and then I start mixing uh, my drums. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to click on the drum segment and I am going to go into edit, render in place and render settings. I make sure as separate events is selected. I click on dry here on top and then beside name, I make sure the lock is activated. Okay. So this way, um, when I'm going to bounce, I'm going to render everything into audio. The new tracks that are going to be created will keep the same name as you see here on the outputs. Okay. You're not going to need to rename everything. Um, by keeping this locked, everything will be renamed according to the output name. Next, I go on the tail size and I make sure I have around five seconds. Um, for tail size. This way the audio is not going to be cut off uh, drastically. It's going to give me a five extra second of tail to the audio, okay? What I do next, I just click on render. And there you go. What I have here, I have my overheads. I have my room. And kick snare and bottom snare there you go so you have your drum kit in audio so there you go now i'm ready to gain stage my stuff if i need to uh, by selecting these tracks like i showed you in other videos and i just you know mix my drums normally like I would with an acoustic drum. So there you go, guys. Very simple, not too complicated. If you have any comments, questions, leave them below. And don't forget to share, to like, and to subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you next time.